When you're thinking about a computer to buy, are you thinking about the computer or are you actually thinking about the operating system that you want to run on that computer? Because a lot of times the hardware is very similar between different computers, but what's different is the operating system that we're going to run on that computer. Whether we're going to run Mac OS X, whether we're going to run Windows 11, or whether we're going to run some version of Linux. In this video, we'll look at a computer that will allow me to have it all. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Learning and Technology with Frank. I'm Frank, and here on this channel, we look at how we can use technology to learn and teach and be more productive, to use technology with a purpose. Now, if you're interested in that type of video, I hope you'll check out some of the other videos on the channel and maybe consider subscribing. Or if you like this video, you can hit the like button after you've watched it, of course. Now, imagine if you had a computer that allowed you to run almost all of the software that you're ever likely to encounter, that allowed you to run multiple operating systems and was really acting as a universal computer. That's what we're going to look at in this video. You know, if you know anything about computers, then the most common question that a computer person gets is, what computer should I buy? Or, is this a good computer? Or, what do you recommend as a computer? And when it comes down to it, a lot of people focus on hardware. And that's kind of the wrong way of approaching buying a computer, in my opinion. I think what you really need to do is look at what you'd like to do with the computer. If you want to run a certain piece of software, then that software will run on an operating system. And the operating system you use will determine the hardware that you buy in order to run that operating system. So let's take, for example, say you have a game that you like to play. A lot of games run on the Windows operating system, which means you want hardware that can run Windows. For other people, they might have an iPhone or an iPad, and they want to run the Apple operating system so that they can be part of a connected system that allows them to move things back and forth easily. Or they may wish to use specific software for creation or some of the, the Mac only software. And then we may have people that want to use a lot of open source software or free software and they'd like to use the Linux operating system, which is also a very popular operating system for people that are doing programming or doing electronics development, Internet of Things, uh, different types of open source project work. And to make things even a little more challenging, sometimes the best piece of software runs on one operating system and not another. So for example, you might have Microsoft Office. It runs on both Windows and Mac, but it doesn't run on Linux. Or you might have, say, an astronomy program that runs on Linux because it's an open source program, but it doesn't run on Windows, but you can make it run on a Mac. So there's all sorts of different programs that will only run on one or maybe a couple of operating systems. Maybe the version of Microsoft Office on Windows is different than the version that runs on Mac. And depending on what you're trying to do, you may need the Windows features that don't run on a Mac or vice versa. It can become really confusing. And like most things, you can spend a lot of money on hardware or you can actually go a little bit too light and not really get hardware that's capable of running the operating system that you would like to run. What are we gonna do? Well, as you guessed by this video, and it's taken me a little while to get there, I appreciate that. We have an operating system and a system that will allow us to run Mac OS X and Windows and Linux all on one system. And the reason we can do that is because there's a piece of software called Parallels. Parallels is a piece of software that runs on a Mac computer, but it allows me to run the Windows operating system, allows me to run a new clean version of the Mac operating system for demos or development, and it allows me to run multiple different types of Linux operating systems, all by using my Mac hardware. Now, Mac hardware is a little more expensive than maybe some of the comparable Windows machines, but it is, in my opinion, very well engineered, and I do often recommend a Mac computer to any of my students or family members that ask me what they should get. The reason for this is that the Mac can run different operating systems by using Parallels, 
let's go take a look at how that works. So I'm on my Mac and I've installed Parallels and you can see that I can download Mac OS X and various different versions of the Linux operating system. In my case, I'm using a Mac with something called Apple Silicon. You'll know that as an M1 to M4, but I can install the ARM version of Windows 11 and that's going to allow me to go in, I'll set the directory here, and I can download and install Windows 11 that I can then run on this Mac environment. What this is going to allow me to do is install Windows only programs, but they will run and I can run them in this window running Windows on my Mac. So I've gone through and as I'm installing this, I have paused the video so that it's a little bit quicker for us to see. But you can see that I'm doing a complete installation of Windows 11 here on my Mac. It's going to create a Windows installation that's capable of running all the Windows programs that I need. I can run games on here. There are some things that sometimes might not run. You do have to take a look at the Parallels website, but I would say the vast majority of programs will run with no problem. I've done a lot of testing, including playing some games on here as well. So you can see, and, and that would be AAA titles as well. So you can see I've successfully installed Windows. I do need to activate it because Windows does require a license, but when I activate it, I can run it at the same time that I'm running Mac. I get all of my different programs and the two operating systems will actually work with each other, meaning that I can share files back and forth. Let's say, for example, I create a video on my Windows machine, I can drag it onto my Mac machine and do editing in tools that are Mac only tools like Final Cut Pro. I can also go in and add different hardware. So the hardware here, for example, cameras and printers and all of these devices can be connected to the Windows operating system, meaning that I could do things like if I wanted to connect up a CD or special input devices, microphones, cameras, I can have all of those controlled by the Windows operating system or controlled by the Mac operating system. Now there's a lot of things we can do. I'll go to my control center here and you can see that I've got windows here so I can start that at any time. But if I go to the plus arrow, I can go in and download other operating systems. I can go in, for example, and download Mac OS X. So even though I'm running Mac OS X as my main operating system, I can actually download another copy of Mac OS X. This is great if I want to do things like demos or do any type of development and I don't really want to have my main Mac operating system with all of its configured options. I want to have sort of a nice clean install of the Mac operating system. I can then go in, take my download and install it. I'm going to change the directory here just because I've cleaned up the directories here, put it in my default directory and it's going to allow me to install Mac OS X on top of Mac OS X. So I'll be able to go in, it'll take a few moments to install it, I'll pause the recording again just to, to, clean, to make it a little bit faster for us. But you'll see that now I'm running my Mac OS X as my main operating system, I'm running Windows as a guest operating system, and now I'm running Mac OS X on top of Mac OS X as another operating system. And this means that I can install all the applications that I want on any of these guest operating systems. Generally speaking, people that are saying you should get a Windows machine, a lot of times that's for gaming because they want to run games. And the thing with Parallels is that it can run many, many of the Windows games. So I generally use my computers for productivity and development and those types of things. So again, I'm just configuring my Mac operating system here, making sure I'll, I'll put in an account. I can create an account. I'll just pause that while I put in the information and we'll go in here. And then what I'll do is I could log in with my Mac account, my Apple account, and it would bring in all my settings but it could be if I'm doing development work that I don't necessarily want those settings. So I'll go in here and I can go in and create, sign into my Apple account, create a new Apple account. But what I'll do is let's just pause this here and I'll just agree to the license here. And then I don't need location services because this is a machine within a machine. Um, I'll just pop into Canada here. I mean, I'm in Canada, so I'm close enough to Grand Prairie. And we'll go in here. I won't bother sharing information on this virtual machine. And we'll go in here 
and we'll disable Siri as well, although I could keep it enabled as well and choose my theme in here. Just a typical Mac setup that I'm doing here. And welcome to Mac. I now have Mac on Mac. Just pause the recording. There we go. Put it over here. So now you can see I've got Windows and I've got Mac. But that's not the only operating systems that I can run on here. So I've got two operating systems, but the title of this video said there were three. The third operating system is Linux. Now, Linux is an interesting operating system. It's used for a lot of development, but it's also used to run on very inexpensive hardware. A lot of times when I'm running it on a Mac, I'm running it on good hardware uh, or fairly expensive hardware relative to, to a you know, refurbished computer. But the nice thing is Linux is a great development environment. So you can actually download or run virtual machines that are pre-configured for say artificial intelligence development or Python development, any type of open source development that I might want to do. Really good for a lot of things, robotics, and there's all sorts of reasons why we might want to use a Linux operating system. And again, remember that I can connect hardware to it so that if I had a USB device, like a ro if I'm doing some robotics, I might want to connect that and make it part of, make the Linux operating system have control over it. So I'm going to put in, my, you know, my password I'm going to set up. In this case, I have a, a Debian 12 here, but there's other ones. There's Ubuntu. I can even download my own uh, image file for a different version of Linux. Um, now you do, this is an ARC type of architecture as opposed to an Intel architecture. That's maybe getting a little bit into the weeds, but the idea is that you, you do have to, if you're doing really advanced work, you'll know what that means. Um, but for now, here I have everything I need. I have my Mac operating system, I have my Windows operating system, and I have my Linux operating system all running on one Mac computer. One of the things that I think is really quite important is this Mac computer that I'm using for this demo is actually a little bit older. It's a Mac Mini, but it's not the latest Mac Mini. I do have a Mac Mini G4 that you'll see me use in a lot of my videos. This is actually a Mac Mini M2. So this is, I said G4, I meant M4. So this is a Mac Mini um, M2 as opposed to the Mac Mini M4 that I normally use for day-to-day for -day work. It does have, I believe, 16 gigs of RAM, which means that I'm able to dedicate some of the RAM to each of these three virtual machines. I would generally never run all three at the same time on my Mac. I would run one at a time. I will often have Windows and Mac OS X running at the same time. And then if I need to do something with Linux, I'll go in there and I will, you know, close down the Windows machine, open up Linux, give it some memory, make sure that I, that I have that there. Now, all of them will take up disk space for the operating system itself, plus any programs you install, like any computer. And this is where, if you are using a Mac computer, having a high-speed external hub can be really good. I have some other videos here on the channel where I talk about that. But what's really impressive to me here is that just by having my Mac computer, in my case, a little M2 Mac Mini, could also be a MacBook uh, laptop, the key being that I have enough memory, so I do like to have about 16 gigs of memory. Here we go, we have all three. For myself, I really do like the idea of buying a really good piece of hardware that allows me to run multiple operating systems by using Parallels to do that. This means that any piece of software I'm likely to encounter, I can find a way to run it on my Mac, whether it's for Windows, Linux, or Apple operating systems. That's a pretty useful thing. One of the things that I would recommend, oh, and I'll put a link down below for Parallels. Make sure to check that out. One of the things that I do recommend is that you get a fair amount of RAM, as much RAM as you can on the Mac that you decide to buy. So for example, 16 gigs would be really good. That tends to be what I get. Or even in some cases, I'll get 32 gigs of RAM just because I might do a lot of concurrent virtual machines. But that's because I'm teaching networking. So sometimes I'll have multiple machines like client server stuff. But if general use, if you had a machine with 16 gigs of RAM, you'd be in really good shape to run say Windows and Mac OS X at the same time and get a lot of performance out of that. The thing that you also want to make sure you do is have a way to expand your storage 
because everything takes up disk space. The operating system takes up disk space. Any programs that you install take up disk space, especially games if you install those. So I do have some other videos where I talk about expanding memory on Macs. With, uh, you wanna make sure you get the right type of drive enclosures and the actual cables are a very important consideration there. If you'd like me to do some more detailed setups of any of these operating systems in Parallels, comment down below. For example, I can show you how I attach different hardware devices and make Windows work with them, how I share files between Windows and a Mac. There's a lot that we can do and I'm more than happy to show you some advanced configurations as well. So thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video and let me know what you think. Do you think that you want to have one universal computer that runs all of the operating systems and all of the software? Do you prefer to just stick with one system like Linux or Windows or Apple and not even worry about other operating systems? Or is it something that you think you want to try to explore and play around with? I'm really excited to hear your thoughts. Thank you again for watching. We'll see you in the next video.